listening in. But uh, we do have young listeners, too, that uh, enjoy listening to For the People as young as 10, from what we understand, enjoying the show. So we try to entertain 10-year-olds, but if you got a mind like a 25-year-old at 10, that is rare. It must be good genes. Here's an article that I came across by Lynn Allison from Newsweek, and she says, when major disasters like Hurricane Harvey and Irma strike, the first priority is to keep people safe. Process involves dramatic evacuations, searches and rescues with millions witnessing heartbreaking images on live and social media. All of these stresses or stressors become imprinted in our hearts and brains and can last for days, weeks, months or longer. Mental health experts say, in addition, they note that after the initial emergency passes, the long process of rebuilding and healing begins. And for many people, the post-traumatic stress following a natural disaster can be deadly. She goes on. When our brains perceive that we don't have enough resources to cope with our current demands, it triggers a cascade of reactions and rampant hormones in the body designed to help us short-term to run away or flight or fight danger. However, if we don't mobilize these reactions in some way to turn into a positive direction, they land up flooding our system for too long and become toxic, says Dr. Heidi Hanna, Ph.D. executive director of the American Institute of Stress and author of a new book, The Seven Habits of Stress Mastery. He was telling Newsmax Health, the impacts of post-traumatic stress go well beyond psychological issues. It can be cardiovascular, noted cardiologist Stephen Sinatra. He calls stress the grim reaper that abruptly ends life by rupturing unstable plaque in a vital vessel or by triggering its lethal disturbance in heart rhythm. Jerry Lyles, Ph.D., and an internationally recognized expert on dealing with stress and trauma, he said, trained hundreds of individuals, rather, including the fire rescue workers at Ground Zero and international medical teams in the Asian torn tsunami area, sharing his time-tested, scientifically measured formula for disaster recovery. He says the first step in recovery from any of life's storms is to make sure that you provide for your own basic needs such as water, shelter, clothing, and rest, he tells Newsmax Health. You must help yourself before you can help others. And uh, he says you gotta you got to stay hydrated. You have to eat properly, moving, exercise regularly, and get sufficient rest and sleep. Folks, uh, you got to take care of yourself. You know, a lot of you are stressing yourself out from your loved ones that live in Florida or Texas. A lot of you are just not getting sleep. You got to take care of yourself. My dad didn't. He died of heart failure at 50 years old back in 95. Now, he was a smoker, but stress got him. 98% blockage in his arteries, so he had plaque. Make sure you know what your numbers are and get your plaque checked out. That really, clogged arteries, that'll get you. Make sure you get checked out. Make sure those levels are good. Get a physical. You're supposed to have that annual physical. Some of you, some of you listening, you know who you are. You don't even remember the last time you saw the doctor because you you're scared of doctors. And why are you scared of doctors? Because they might find something out and you don't want to know about. Preventative maintenance, my friends. Preventative maintenance. And speaking of preventative maintenance, we are offering the Survival Guide 2 written by Chuck Harder, and I helped him put it together, and we're putting it together again with a DVD of Memories of the Telford Hotel. That's right. Memories of the Telford, when Chuck was in the studio and Chuck is the host, providing the Survival Guide bundle, okay, is what we're going to call it a book, and a DVD. We're selling it for $25, but everything in the survival guide will help you survive. Everything you need to know about generators and a terrible story here out of the Bay Area. A entire family died from a generator. They cranked it up in their house. 
Somebody tried to crawl out. I think maybe somebody did. Crawled out, but almost dead. But the whole family died. They cranked up the generator in their house. God have mercy. You know, you think that would be one of those things where people would know that carbon monoxide poisoning kills, but apparently people just don't know that still in 2017. They still do it. Yeah, one guy got his arm cut off by a chainsaw trying to help a neighbor out, get his tree out of the way. They say more people die after the fact and more injuries happen after the fact. It's true. What's your survival guide plan? We just talked about stress, and let me tell you, a great stress reducer would be to get the book and the DVD for $25. This is the best, best of Chuck Carter in his mind and the preparations that we made to make sure that all the stuff works time tested. Everything that uh, is in the book, we tested to make sure that it works because it needs to work. It has to save your family. It has to save you. And it's in the library in yours that you can grab quickly. It's not on a computer because if cell phones are down, you got to have something that's in your hand and something you should have in your head. So you get the book, you'll have it as a reference guide, and the DVD is a bonus. The bonus is Chuck at the Telford Hotel. It's called Reflections. It's a really wonderful piece. And what a beautiful place the Telford Hotel was, I got to tell you. Uh, When I first stepped into the Telford Hotel in 1995, it was a piece of paradise, and it felt special. And the reason it felt special is that Chuck was doing something quite wonderful. It was a refreshing voice on the air, was a friend that was helping fix America first. We had bumper stickers that said that way before Trump was saying it, Chuck was saying it. And that's why it's nice to hear Donald Trump say it. Because people from the left made fun of Chuck. People hated Chuck in Washington, especially the Clintons, who put an 18-year audit on him and took him off the air. But when I got there, there was waterfalls in the back, gas lanterns in the front. Presidents stayed there at the Telford Hotel in the early 1900s. Several presidents signed the guest book. And they made it into a bed and breakfast there after. It's closed now, the Telford Hotel. Maybe somebody will buy it. Uh, Maybe somebody has the money to be able to restore it. Somebody asked me the other day, it just kind of uh, made me wonder uh, if somebody would buy it because it is for sale. But uh, somebody asked me, would I do the show from the Telford Hotel if it was available? And I just got goosebumps. I would absolutely do the show from the Telford. It just, uh, it's a neat place, folks. It's where time stands still. It's right on the banks of the Suwannee River. And it's just, uh, it's very special. And the local folks are just genuine, kind-hearted, uh, small town, but gl- just gorgeous all the way around you. You know. Gainesville's what, just an hour or so up the road. And uh, you know, Ocala, just an hour from there. Uh, three hours to Tampa. You know, it's not, it, it, it practically feels like you're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> you have the convenience store, but we had an entire radio network at the Telford Hotel. We had a restaurant. We had a bookstore where you can go in and buy books. And then the radio studio where Chuck did the show, this show, for the people right from the lobby. And I remember walking into the door. My dad was the president of the network then. And Chuck was uh, seated on a couch. And he put his hand out. And he introduced himself. And I'll never forget it. He goes, hello. I'm Chuck Carter. I'm a beach ball with legs. And Chuck, you know, overweight. He always was overweight. <laughs> For, you know, when he was a boy, he was overweight. It's just always a challenge. But I didn't care. It's Chuck was just a genius. He was just, and he was very personable, very kind, and became a benevolent father to me after my dad passed away. So 
I will forever be indebted to him. And I'm actually going to come and see him very soon. It's just Irma and my mother-in-law being in the hospital. It's been really, really tough. But we put together to, uh, the uh, Energy Liberty book that some of you guys remember back in the past where we built an Energy Liberty house off the power grid, dug a well, had a water tower. We can have plenty of water. And all the stuff was, you know, environmentally friendly and all in the book. And the Survival Guide, too, is our latest creation. Um, and that's the book. And then the DVD, you'll be able to just kind of get a sense of what I got a sense of, where it just kicked off the whole thing. And it was very special. And if you don't have a copy of this, and, and maybe you got the survival guide already, but you don't have the reflections video, it's well worth having that. And consider it a donation, if anything. But uh, that includes shipping and handling. $25 for the survival guide to and the DVD, Reflections at the Telford Hotel, $25. And all you have to do is go online right now at ForThePeopleShow.com and just donate, where it says make a donation. Um, and then your address will be in there, or if you want to put your address in there, and it'll ship it off, and you might want to put Survival Guide and DVD. A $25 donation or more, but I'll ship that off to you now. And you'll be forever grateful and confident that you have something at your hands that really does work and stuff that you can get your uh, yourself at a local hardware store. You can, you, know, you can assemble, you can purchase smart stuff. This was put together to really make sure that you survive just about anything. And you can do it, folks. You can do it no matter how old you are, even on a shoestring budget. And that's why Chuck put together. And that's the neat thing about Chuck. He he was for the little person. And he never took a big salary. School person salary. That's the problem with a lot of uh a lot of the radio talk show hosts today. They they make millions and millions of dollars and a lot of them they sell out for all sorts of endorsements and things like that. They don't even know if the stuff works or not, but they just tout it. And that's just not how I operate. I got to make sure the stuff works. The stuff is on the up and up because if I'm going to lend my voice to it and my reputation, I'm going to make sure without a doubt it helps and makes a difference. And you're, you're not going to feel like you got taken advantage of. So we would like to sell a million of these. Uh, we just want to sell enough of these um, that can keep for the people on the air and keep things going and help you at the same time. So this is a wonderful, wonderful package, the Survival Guide Bundle 2, that includes the DVD of Reflections of the Telford Hotel. $25 at ForThePeopleShow.com. Make the donation and do it now. Munchkin tried to charter an Air Force jet for his honeymoon. Did you hear this? Steve Munchen, the former Wall Street fat cat, Steve Munchen. He reportedly tried to charter a government jet to whisk him and his w actress wife on their European honeymoon earlier this summer. And who is complaining about this? Who is upset about this? ABC News. They're all upset. They say the request for the jet which would cost about $25,000 per hour to operate, was issued in writing from the secretary's office, but eventually deemed unnecessary, ABC reported. Well, thank you, ABC, for reporting that. Why didn't you report where Michelle Obama would end up in the same place as where Barack Hussein Obama would be vacationing, but she didn't want to be on the same plane because... She was trying to get the kids ready, trying to get them dressed in the White House, and took her own Air Force One, which cost over hundreds of thousands of dollars for another plane, for Air Force Two. But they didn't report that. And they did this all the time, going the same exact place, but had to have two planes because she had to get the kids dressed. She had to get the mother-in-law situated, yada, yada. Um, and there was a reason why. There's always a reason why, folks. It wasn't just because he was going on a honeymoon. He needed a secure communications center 
because he was actually working honeymoon kind of a thing. And you have to have encryption. You have to have 